Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me. And today we're going to be talking about asthma and fermented foods or cultured foods, which are the same thing. And one of the first friends I ever told about cultured foods had a little boy with asthma. I think he was like seven or eight. I can't remember now. Um, and making and drinking, a, he was making and drinking a keeper smoothie every day. His mom was doing that for him. And it allowed him to get off his asthma inhaler and live a really normal life, um, which was very exciting to his mom and himself. I was quite surprised and thrilled that it worked so rapidly because we had just started eating cultured foods. She was, you know, the first person I really told about cultured foods. And when the, her little boy got better, it really surprised me. And after about six months of doing that, maybe six to eight months of doing it, um, his mom stopped making him kefir. I think it was summertime and she just stopped making it for a few weeks. And then one morning, her, her little seven-year-old boy came into the kitchen when was standing in front of the refrigerator with big, huge tears running down his cheeks saying, Mom, I feel my asthma coming back. I need my kefir. You haven't been giving me my kefir. And it was a testimony that kefir was a powerful food that worked like medicine. And even a seven-year-old boy knew that. And it was um, that was an exciting time for me because I didn't know kefir could do that. I didn't know why kefir was doing that, but it was making him better. Now, fast forward um, just recently, I have helped at least personally in my network of friends, uh, two more people who have been having asthma problems get off their inhalers and not need them anymore after consuming kefir. And the American Journal of of epidemiology tied asthma to the consumption of antibiotics. And the study found that when doctors gave young children antibiotics, their risk of developing asthma between the ages of sick increased by 50%. And another study of research in the UK led by allergist Aidan Kustock analyzed data from more than 1,000 children from birth until the age of 11. They looked at their medical records to determine how often doctors gave them antibiotics and how often they ended up with asthma. And we noted significantly higher risk of, of physicians confirmed wheezing after antibiotic prescriptions. They noticed the kids were all of a sudden having breathing problems. And there was a 70% increased risk of any kind of asthma after they were given antibiotics. Now, this speaks to the connection between healthy gut bacteria and the occurrence of asthma. And I'm not against antibiotics. I just think you need to replace some of these species that are getting killed off because it kills off the good and the bad bacteria. And I'm going to explain more about this in this article um, that I've written in, on this podcast um, that we really need a diverse, a, a diverse amount of species of bacteria, and especially lactobacillus in our guts. And that's what's helping with the asthma. And I'll explain more as we go on. Um, there's a connection. This is a, a doctor that talked about the connection between healthy gut bacteria and the occurrence of asthma. And what he said is that Asthma can be linked to the hygiene problem that we're having that can result when the immune system does not develop properly because we're so clean, we are not getting some of these healthy species of bacteria because we're using antibacterial soaps and, and all these different kinds of things. Um, and since, you know, believing this can be caused if a growing baby is not exposed to enough varieties of bacteria is in too sterile of an environment, and then you have antibiotics and you have C-sections happening more and more. Babies don't really get the microbes um, that they really needed to build a healthy immune system. And that's, you know, we need a diverse amount of bacteria in our gut. So the Canadian Healthy Infant Longitudinal Development Study was carried out at five different universities and hospitals. They studied asthma and gut bacteria in infants. And researchers selected groups of children at different levels of asthma risk and they also analyzed their stool samples, which had been taken at three months and at one year of age. They looked at the composition of the gut bacteria in the children at different asthma risk levels and analyzed how the children's digestion worked and what specific, specific bacteria they had in their guts. Researchers selected 319 children who had both allergic reactions, and they tested that by the skin prick test, and wheezing at age one. The comparison group of children did not exhibit any allergies or wheezing at age one. Children with allergic reactions had a much higher chance 
than those with these conditions of being diagnosed with asthma by the age of five. So the researchers used DNA and analysis to identify bacteria in the school stool samples and looked for differences in the bacteria present between the groups that had the highest and lower ri lowest risk of asthma. Now, after analyzing the bacteria in the gut, they wanted to see whether the differences in bacteria are linked to differences in the way the children's digestive system worked. And they found 22 children who had both allergic reactions and wheezing by age one. These children had similar amounts and species of bacteria in their stool samples compared with, uh, compared with other children who did not have these re allergic reactions. So basically, the children who had allergic reactions and wheezing by one, uh, wheezing by the age of one, both had these special species in their bacteria that the other children didn't, that didn't have the allergic reactions. So they had a different um, bacteria uh, microbiome than the other children. So Dr. Benjamin Marshall from the University of Lusuania in Switzerland stated, for a number of years, exposed to microbes has been linked with protection against asthma. A classic example is growing up on a farm, drinking raw milk. He said previous research was showing a mounting role for diet and microbes in the first year of life is very key. That's when your immune system's developing. That's when the baby's basically developing all of its immunities. Um, and he added, this, studies, uh, this study adds weight to the observation and supports the concept that there are certain developmental windows in early life where it's really important to get the right signals. And that's, at, you know, when you're very young. Um, babies mostly have the phyto in their, in their guts when they're born. And then it's very important to start introducing lactobacillus. Um, and that just hap should happen naturally. Um, and a common factor in all studies so far that have been the microbiome, in fact, making sure babies have the right bugs at the right time, he said, might be the best step towards preventing asthma and allergies. Um, and you see this a lot in children that they have tendencies and a lot of them outgrow the asthma as they get older. And I believe that it's because they're getting different species in their gut that are preventing that. And as you see, and as you'll see in here in this podcast, lactobacillus is one of those very important microbes that you need. And there's a, div there's a very diverse, that's a very diverse group of different species and subspecies lactobacillus. And it's important to get those as you get older and that can help prevent and um, asthma, and not only that, but um, really set you off on a very healthy microbiome to help your immune system and to help you combat all kinds of illnesses. So for so many years, I've just received so many emails and witnessed so many people who have found a lot of relief from asthma, having cultured foods, especially kefir. Um, that has been a big one. Um, and even cultured vegetables have helped a lot. And in the early days of making culture food, I ran into a woman at a health food store who had come to one of my classes and she recognized me. And she was just over the moon excited to tell me that her husband no longer needed his asthma inhaler after 15 years of use. And just by having kefir every day, she said it made her a believer in the power of these foods and how they work like medicine. I just had another person tell me the same thing, that they don't need their asthma inhaler anymore and how excited they are um, because they're... They normally get bronchitis every year, and now they're not. And uh, it's it's just a very common occurrence that I hear a lot from people that the you know kefir is a very powerful food. It has a lot of lactobacillus species in it, and um, many studies show that intake of fermented foods and significantly enlarges the number of microorganisms in your diet. And you know that because like for instance, kefir has fifty plus bacteria. Powerful um, activities of these strains of microorganisms and fermented foods include so many health-promoting benefits, not just species, but they increase the probiotic in the body. So, okay, so when you ingest a food, depending on what it is, is either going to feed your microbiome or it's not. So fruits, plants, fibers, those all feed bacteria and make them grow and multiply. But other foods that are sugars and processed foods feed the other types of bacteria and make them grow. So when you have probiotic foods, it makes the species stronger. It, it, you ingest new species sometimes if you're missing them. And um, it has so many health-promoting benefits. By It, it also is, has, in, is, the activity increases, but you also get food safety because when you have a fermented food, 
It's a very safe food to eat because there's so much good bacteria. It preserves the food, makes it safe, keeps out pathogens. So it's a very powerful food to eat um, to help you not only, I've seen it get rid of food poisoning. I've seen these foods do so many things because they do promote food safety. They also make bioavailability of the nutrients in it. So for instance, when you drink or eat a fermented food, you're going to get more nutrients from the food you eat with it because it allows you to absorb it better because these foods are pre-digested and they have enzymes and they help you to absorb nutrients that otherwise you might not get. They also have antioxidants, huge amounts, and they have antimicrobial compounds, which can go after pathogens. Um, and these are just a few of the things that fermented food do. They boost your immune system. Um, they can lower things like your blood pressure and your blood sugars because they work on enzymes in the stomach that allow those things to naturally occur when you eat them. And I have found that personally myself. They also synthesize bioactive active and nutritional compounds and they just change the microbiome in a very powerful way. Now, interestingly enough, fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, and kimchi, you only need about a daily consumption of around 100 grams of these fermented foods would be sufficient to achieve the dose that would allow your microbiome to change quite dramatically. And this, this just keeps happening as you consume these foods um, which, you know, it's it's necessary to change the gut microbiome if you're struggling. If you don't have these species in your gut, um, getting fermented foods on a regular basis is huge because it will continue to feed the, the proper species, but it will also help them to grow and multiply. And when they do, they take over and they get rid of the pathogens. They dominate the gut. They supply all kinds of potential health benefits and for instance, like kefir has some of the most species of lactobacillus that you really need um, to help your body get enough of what it needs to prevent things like asthma. So yogurt, kefir, and other fermented foods um, represent some of the most essential sources of the probiotic strains, you know, the lactobacillus. So there's been um, many studies on the microbacillus and, and asthma. There are 19 strains of lactobacillus and kefir. And it's one of the reasons it works so well on asthma. And that's the one I've seen help people the most because kefir has the 19 different species and subspecies um, that people really need to really repopulate their gut. Now, a kefir-derived uh, strain of lactobacillus, they call it LAB, has been shown to exhibit anti-allergic effects. And it was also clear and demonstrated that LB, this LAB, and they call it kefirin of Phacinces is able to suppress the features of asthmatic um, phenotypes, people who have asthma. And this one study that they showed that the anti-inflammatory and anti-allergic effects of kefir in a, in a mouse asthma model, um, it suppressed an induced airway, a hyper-responsiveness to an inhaled methachloroline. Now, methachlorine is used to determine whether you have asthma. Um, it causes wheezing and shortness of breath. So they give it to this and then they test it and it was able to suppress that. And kefir significantly inhibited the increase of the total inflammatory cell count induced and the distressed lung returned to normal. So kefir showed anti-inflammatory and anti-allergic effects in this study and may be used as a new therapeutic, uh, therapeutic potential for the treatment of allergic um, bronchial asthma. Um, so there's there's a lot of research showing that it, it has so, so many benefits for people who have asthma that um, I just think it's a no-brainer that to make a kefir smoothie in the morning, especially if you struggle with these things. Now, they've also studied kimchi, which is a fermented cabbage. I'm sure most people are familiar with that. A team of researchers headed by Professor Cha Yansu at the Department of Food and Science and Chunpak National University analyzed 590 kimchi-related papers. He found that kimchi, one of Korean's major fermented foods, is very helpful in preventing allergic responses such as dermatitis, asthma, and people who consumed more than 40 grams of kimchi a day had a lower asthma prevalence rate, which a lower response to asthma. And in the 17 papers which studied kimchi's health benefits for human beings, it was revealed the, the more one eats fermented kimchi, the whole, more health benefits it offers. And the main bacteria in cultured veggies is lactobacillus plantarum. 
And that is a transient bacteria. So it doesn't last very long in the body, maybe four to five days. So that's why I think they found that the more they ate, the better they did because it doesn't last very long. And this bacteria has way more benefits beyond just asthma. It's a very powerful um, bacteria that really, it does so many things and it works mightily in the body. They've seen it do, you know, they did this study on children who had sepsis and they were, they found that um, they, if they gave them this particular strain that not only did it get rid of the sepsis, which is deadly to infants, it also helped their, um, their lungs and they didn't think it would help a distant organ, but it did. It improved their respiratory responses. And that was a, a really surprising thing that they found that uh, kimchi can work also um, on a distant organ. So not just on the gut, but also on helping breathing and respiratory problems in these babies, which was, um, they were quite surprised by that. Now, something new that I have discovered is L-ruterine l, -ruter l which are lactobacillus, both of them, lactobacillus ruteri and lactobacillus gasseri, were also be, were also found to be very effective on asthma. And the low levels of lactobacillus are reported to be associated with asthma, you know, developments during early life. But when they supplemented them, um, the decreased asthma risk in infants was quite profound. Uh, two of the strains that are found in kefir, l casei and l um, parasis colonized the gut and seemed to decrease the risk of allergies at five years of age in this study, despite allergic her heredity, because they their parents were allergic. And it actually worked on these children um, who were kind of, they believed, destined to get allergies. One study also was done on 44 asthma patients aged 6 to 18, and they were recruited from the University of Santo Thomas Hospital in the Philippines for a study period of three months. They were given supplements of l ruteri And the interesting thing was the supplement that they gave them was almost the same supplement we use in l ruteri yogurt. Um, it's the one Dr. Davis recommends, but ours works exactly the same as that one, so they're kind of the same. And that was the one they used, and they saw huge improvements in the asthma uh, as compared to those who received a placebo. It worked very well on them. And uh, we make a great yogurt that has high counts of that l ruteri in it, much higher than probiotics. And uh, it works better too because it's a fermented food and that works better in the body than a supplement. They also did a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study on children who were aged 6 to 12 who had asthma and um, they were they did this with l gasseri supplementation. And the study either received l gasseri or placebo. And the results show that the um, pulmonary function and peak expiratory flow rates increased significantly and the clinical symptom scores for asthma decreased in the probiotic treated patients compared to the control group. So that was with l which is lactobacillus l -gasseri. So these studies were done with probiotic supplementation and you, you don't get as uh, the high CFU counts, the colony forming units that you get in the yogurt. It's so much higher in the yogurt than it is in the supplements. Plus, when you take supplements, sometimes they can open up parts of the body they don't belong. So if you want to restore lactobacillus, yogurt a couple times a week is a huge, or kefir, is a huge way to do that. And the body knows how to handle the food. It does much better with food than it does supplements because it has like a little protective halo around it, speeds to the parts of the body where it's needed, recolonizes things, adds the species in there, and it works really, really fast. And it's actually very fun to make. You know, one of my readers um, emailed me not too long ago to tell me about the juice from cultured veggies and how it stopped an asthma attack dead in its tracks. This is this is her this is her words. She said, one afternoon she found herself having an asthma attack from a windstorm, and she didn't have her inhaler to help her. Luckily, she had a cooler in her car with a jar of cultured veggies. She swigged the juice down as best as she could. And since her airways were closing, she was really scared. And lo and behold, it worked. Her airways opened up and she could breathe again without using an inhaler. So uh, let me let me tell you her story. Uh, this is actually, that wasn't her words. That was my description, but this is her words. Debilitating tiredness, getting much, much better. Severe asthma symptoms gone. Cravings from carbs and sweets gone. I've been drinking kefir and kombucha on a daily basis for three short weeks. I don't think I've had this much energy and focus since I was a young child. 
I was diagnosed with Graves' disease, debilitating tiredness, brain fog, and depression due to not feeling well for almost 25 years. I was able to overcome depression for six months. However, since I have adopted probiotic foods in my daily life, my energy has increased, my focus is much better, my mood continues to elevate. About 15 years ago, I couldn't breathe very well and finally went to the doctor. I was diagnosed with asthma, which was so severe, the doctor said I should have gone to the emergency room. That day, I was scared for my life, and that was the day I had to start taking inhalers, purchased a nebulizer, which was very expensive, and start taking allergy medicine. Now, about six and a half years ago, I got two chinchillas, Ruby and Daisy, and found that they were highly, I was highly allergic to the hay they ate, as well as the dust they needed to roll around in once a week. I had to turn my office into their playroom because I had a terrible time breathing, which forced me to use an inhaler every single day. I actually had to buy a face mask respirator to keep their bath, clean their bedding, vacuum, which still didn't protect my lungs 100%. A few days ago, I came out of the chinchilla room after sitting on the floor playing with them for about 30 minutes. And that moment, I realized I didn't have um, one asthmatic allergy symptom and I didn't need my inhaler. That just blew my mind. Usually, if I step into the room to do something, let alone let them jump all over me, I couldn't breathe and my mouth, throat, and eyes would itch horribly. You have to pick my jaw off the floor because I couldn't believe I could breathe perfectly well and had zero itchiness. I will be forever grateful, Donna, that you agreed to come into this life and go down to the abyss so that you can heal yourself, your family, and ultimately millions of people. You literally changed my life in three short weeks. God bless. And I have, you know, it's really interesting. I was reading this story and I remember way before Cultured Foods, I had a, a friend who had three girls who my girls played with. And she was 38 years old. This is way before I knew anything about cultured food. And uh, she had asthma and she had pretty severe asthma. And one day um, we had gone swimming in her pool. And the next day she was, uh, her husband took her to the hospital because she was having an asthma attack and they couldn't do anything. And she died. It was just horrible. It was the most devastating thing. Um, she was so young, had three young children and they couldn't stop it. I don't know. They didn't know why it was so bad but it really traumatized me and I remember thinking and I used to watch their girls after she died for their husband because they were good friends of ours and I could remember when I would look at those girls like there's got to be a reason why this happens and there has to be something better than the because she had inhalers and all those types of things and they just weren't working and her lungs just closed up and they couldn't get them open and it was just horrible and I was like what in the world causes that? I remember thinking that. And that was way before I found fermented foods. And, you know, not to say that, you know, everybody still has different levels of asthma and problems, but I have seen this help so many people that it, and I've seen so much research on it now, it's just catching up. I really think we need to start paying attention to the species in our gut. We don't know what's going on down there because you know, they're doing their own little thing down there. They're helping us every day. We don't even know it. We don't know that we need lactobacillus until, you know, we start to put the pieces together. We don't know that antibiotics are killing them off and then we're not putting them back in um, to help us and protect us and build up our immune system, help our airways, help us to breathe properly. Um, you guys, this is just food. This isn't even medicine. This is just food. Um, and it's why I do it because... When I first started eating fermented foods and it helped my blood pressure so much and my blood sugar normalized, I was like, I was a, I was a believer. I was no way I was going back to the life I had once known. But I didn't know why it was working. I didn't understand it until many years later when research started catching up. And it took a couple decades for it to really catch up to start to understand that these species that we take for granted, I mean, we're 100 trillion bacteria that's more than cells in our body. That's more than stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Um, and they're all doing stuff down there that you don't even know about. Um, but knowing that lactobacillus, with there's so many species of this, and that we need them to not only help us have a healthy microbiome, but to help our lungs, to help us breathe properly. All of these things are working on our behalf. And they're placed inside of us for a very important reason. They're placed inside of us to help us. And and we have them and we take it for granted because we don't we can't see what's really happening in this ecosystem in our world, in our little gut down there and all around us. It's everywhere. You know, it's interesting because when I moved here and my daughter moved here, we moved from Kansas City out to California. 
And um, she said she was having trouble fermenting something, but the home, she had moved into an apartment and they had sterilized the apartment. So all the bacteria was gone. And within, they have done studies. And within an hour or two of you moving into a home, you bring your bacteria with it and it starts to colonize. And it didn't take very long, but then it started to work better. But I do think that my home is filled with, with my bacteria. My animals have it. We all, they all say that they all have the same species. Your animals, you, your home, it's all in your home. Um, I think probably is one of the reasons why things ferment so well for me, because I do it all the time. Um, but what's interesting is that what's in me and what's around me, uh, the bacteria that's around me is all a part of this little world, this inner eco microbiome world that abides in me is all around me too. And I bring good to the world if I have good bacteria. So do you. Everywhere you go, you take a cloud of bacteria with you. Everything you touch, everywhere you're in contact. And now a lot of people are freaked out about that and they're afraid of it. But that's why it's important to um, have a healthy microbiome because you do help people when you're healthy. You feel better. You can do things. But not only that, you take it with you wherever you go. Within, They did a study. I wrote a whole article on this. And they took 19 families and moved them to different homes. And within an hour or two, they had colonized the home with their bacteria. It all shifted immediately. And I just find that so interesting. And your animals are have similar bacteria to you too, because you all abide together. So I told my husband a long time ago, whether he liked it or not, he was getting my bacteria. Whether he ate fermented foods or not, this was in the very beginning, he was getting it from me, whether he liked it or not. You get 80 billion bacteria from a single kiss. So honestly, what's in your, what's in your microbiome? What's in your gut? What are you contributing uh, to the, your home and to the people around it? I've always had this theory that when you make meals for people you love, you put your your love into that and they get that. Well, I think you put your bacteria into it too. And they get that too. And that's an important thing that we take for granted that, you know, everywhere we go, everything we do, every part of this world is teeming with these microbes. Um, and they could be good or bad, but 98% of them are good in the body until you get things out of balance. So think about it this way. When you're eating an apple today, you're feeding your microbiome. You're feeding necromancia, which is one of the things that protects your gut lining. When you eat kefir, you're getting 19 subspecies of lactobacillus, which is going to help your lungs. It helps my blood sugar. It helps my blood pressure. It helps, it helps the liver. It does so many things. I keep finding more and more things that these foods do. Um, and there, there's tremendous power in eating fermented foods and you don't need a lot. I mean, I mean, you don't need, I mean, sometimes I just, I crave stuff, but you don't have to eat huge amounts of it to get large amounts of colony forming units that will help you enhance your health, help your immune system, help you to breathe properly and can make a huge difference in your life. It certainly has for me. I mean, it, it created an entire world for me that I didn't know existed and it made me well. You know, when it makes you well, you pay attention. Because something that was so simple that I loved eating was creating uh, these, these organisms inside of me, these living organisms that provided the health benefits that I was so seeking. I was so seeking for the answers to wellness. Why, why was I sick? Why did I have high blood pressure? Why did I have blood sugar? What was going on? What was my body trying to teach me? And I've learned so much from having those things. And that was 20 years ago. I've learned so much about it. It's made such a difference in my life. And it brought such joy to my life and well-being because it changed my emotions. It made me more stable emotionally. It made me feel better. It gave me more joy, more love and compassion for one another. And um, we have studies to show that it, these foods do this. And um, it just takes, you know, in the beginning when you're ingesting them, you have to understand that you're ingesting billions of probiotics in these foods. So start out slowly because what they do is they go in and they go, okay, we want to dominate, but we need numbers. So once they start to dominate, which happens when you eat, consume them, they go after pathogens and kill them. And those pathogens can give off a lot of toxins when they die because they do not like it. And that can be short lived. They call it a healing crisis or a Herkimer reaction. Um, but it's part of the healing process. And um, it can make all the difference in your health. So if you're struggling, even if you don't have asthma, there are so many benefits to these foods. 
um, that I really encourage you just try one. Kefir would be the one I, that's the one I started with and it has the most benefits. But then some of the other species, um, like the yogurts that, um, there's an L-ruteri in kefir, but it's a different strain than the one that's made in the yogurt. So the yogurt is much, much stronger and it will give you benefits um, beyond even kefir because it, it, it abides in a different area. It doesn't bite in the colon. It's in the upper gastro area. It helps to make oxytocin in the brain. It does a lot of things that your body naturally needs to really stay healthy and to feel good emotionally. It helps you sleep. It does a lot of things. So, and I've written many articles and done many podcasts on all of these foods and I continue to learn more. I, you know, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface, but I'm just here to wake you up to the fact that you need those microbes to be healthy. You need them. You need them to breathe properly if you have asthma. Um, and just try kefir. Just that's the easiest one to make. And it has the most lactobacillus in it. If you're struggling with asthma, I have two ways to make kefir. And I'll put this in the article description. And you can go to it. You can make it with kefir grains. You can make easy kefir. Easy kefir is super fun and easy to make. And you just put the package in a jar let it sit with milk on 24 hours. You can do all different kinds, non-dairy or dairy. Let it sit on your counter for 24 hours, and then you have a jar of kefir. That's all you do. You're not doing anything hard. And then you can take a fourth of a cup of that jar and put it into another jar with more milk, and it will make it again and again and again and again and again. So it's very affordable. It's super easy to do. You just need a jar, and you need the culture and some milk, and you can use it with non-dairy or regular dairy. And I have 16 different non-dairy recipes if you if you want that. But it's a fabulous it's a fabulous way to really increase your microbiome and to really help your body. So I hope that helps. If you're struggling with it, asthma, I highly encourage you to give kefir a whirl, give it a try, and I hope you feel better soon because it's it's an amazing food that has really changed my life. So I hope that helps you. And if you want more stuff like this, then tune in next week. And we'll be talking about something else with microbes. So thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.